A crisis has arisen. Unity's undercover operatives are being killed off by an unknown assailant. It seems likely that there's a traitor within the agency. Report to the war room for a full briefing on the situation and a tactical overview of your upcoming mission. Do not be late. Following the briefing, stop by the training facility to hone your skills. Hello. Bruno, how's France? Did you collect any new bullet holes? I know how you love to be shot at. 
I'm teasing. I'm glad you're not damaged. Did you at least encounter an exotic temptress or two? Really? What was her name? What do you mean you don't remember? That's horrible. Of course, I'm famished. Are you buying? Then it's a date. Let's say Maximilian's in half an hour. Ciao. I'm not very happy, you know. It's not like I thought it would be. I never promised it would be as exhilarating as your former trade, only that it would keep you out of jail and make it easier to sleep at night. More wine. You're the first female operative Unity has ever employed. The committee is old-fashioned. They need time to get used to the idea of a woman in this line of work. I know all that, but at this rate I'll be a bloody grandmother before they give me a real assignment. You can always go back to burglary and pickpocketing if you can't live without excitement. Damn it, that's not what I'm saying. I just want to be challenged. I'm sick of wiretaps. I'm sick of eavesdropping on boring strangers who may or may not pose some trivial threat to international security because they forgot to declare a ham sandwich at Heathrow. I don't have the patience for it. It's not what I'm good at. It's never fun paying one's dues, but we all have to endure a bit of frustration and tedium now and then. It builds character. I think I've paid my bloody dues. Is that what you think? God knows I loathe sermons, but I'll tell you right now that you'll never stop paying your dues. Not ever. I'm sorry you're not happy, but you might as well get used to it. Nobody owes you a damn thing. You make it sound like I'm some spoiled child. I'm not asking to be coddled. I just want a chance to prove myself. You're right. I know it's been hard for you, but I'm confident you'll get your chance. All the petty politics in the world won't hold you back. They've done an outstanding job so far, haven't they? You see? What did I tell you? Probably just one of the committee members needing a babysitter on short notice. Ye of little faith, I'll see you there. Why don't we go together? I have an errand to attend to first. You go on ahead. Miss Archer, they're expecting you in the briefing room. Agent Archer, how thoughtful of you to join us. I hope we aren't inconveniencing you too awfully with matters of international security. Not at all, Mr. Smith, but it's charming of you to mention it. It is not my ambition to be charming. Well, that's fortunate. I would advise you to watch your tongue. Well... If it isn't the inimitable Agent Lowry. Sorry I'm late, Smithy. You're looking dapper today. Spare me the disingenuous flattery, old boy. It doesn't suit you. I was being sincere. It was the one polite thing I could think to say. You're still upset with me, aren't you? I assure you I have nothing against you personally. You've served us well for many years, but perhaps too many. I firmly believe it is in Unity's best interest that you retire from field operations and I will continue to campaign to that end until you accept an administrative position. I'm not upset with you, Smithy. I just don't like you. I do understand your concern, but just because you're too old for the field doesn't mean that I am. Until I'm declared unfit for duty, I will continue to prove it. I retired voluntarily. Of course you did. Perhaps we should dispense with the pleasantries and get down to brass tacks. Fine. Lights, please. We lost another agent this afternoon, bringing the total to seven operatives in ten days. It is our firm belief that someone is systematically eliminating our undercover agents, which leads us to believe that the clandestine operations section has been compromised. It seems we have a traitor in our midst. Do you suspect anyone? We suspect everyone. Seven operatives? That's over half the active list. 
Why won't we inform sooner? You're being informed now. This situation has unfolded rather abruptly. The assassin left a lily. A regal finale, to be precise, on or near the corpse of each victim. Mean anything to either of you? Volkov. Who? Dmitry Volkov. The regal finale is his calling card. The name's familiar. What do we know about him? He's a right bastard. Anything more specific? Just what's in his file. Born in Kamchatka in 1921. Distinguished himself as an academic prodigy and master chess player by the age of eight, by which time he'd also earned notoriety for refining various torture techniques on neighbors' pets. It seems he joined the NKVD in 37 and served as some sort of disciplinarian in a gulag near Kiev. His whereabouts during the war are unknown except for a brief mention in 43, when he was spotted by an OSS officer at Leningrad interrogating prisoners of war who would later disappear without a trace. Ah, yes. I remember this fellow. We've had dealings with him before. Sometime after the war, he emerged again, this time in the employ of Smirsch. He's personally credited with well over a thousand executions, spies and Soviet dissidents for the most part. In 61, a failed assassination attempt left him without an eye. He was shot in the face at close range by one of our finest agents. You flatter me, but I shouldn't have missed. He escaped by throwing himself off a 70-foot cliff into an icy river. It was presumed that he survived, as no body was ever recovered. In fact, rumor has it, he's currently working for an organization calling itself Harm as Director of Executive Action. I don't have to tell you what that means. What do we know about Harm? Unfortunately, there's very little about them in our files. Well, despite the obvious risks, we still have a job to do. In this case, a very important one. Wet work. Precisely. And after this recent catastrophe, the two of you are our only available assets. To be perfectly frank, Agent Archer, you're only getting this assignment because we've no other choice. Matters of such delicacy aren't really the sort of thing we would usually entrust to a woman. Emotional inconstancy and assassination do not make especially good bedfellows, if you take my meaning. I'll try to surpass your expectations. Considering that I expect you to fail miserably, you shouldn't have to try very hard. Enough of this. Time is of the essence. Stop by the toy shop before you go. They have some new gizmos you might find useful. Don't dally too long, though. Your flight leaves at 6 p.m. Where are we going? Morocco. Agent Archer, what does harm stand for? I haven't figured that out yet. See if you can't find out. And be careful, both of you.
We strongly advise that you go through the training course before embarking on your first mission. There are many nuances and features you may overlook otherwise. If you prefer to skip training, just head to the exit.
Step behind the yellow line to reset the simulation. Well done. The volume of your footsteps can be modified by the material upon which you're moving. Be careful of tile, metal, and other hard surfaces. Whenever possible, favor carpet or turf. All right, now open the door to the next area. Try again. Step behind the yellow line to reset the simulation. You're pretty light-footed. If you're not sure what to expect around a corner, it is generally safe to step out for a moment to see what's up ahead. As long as you duck back quickly, you probably won't be spotted. Of course, the closer you are to an enemy, the more likely it is that you'll be seen, so listen for footsteps or conversation before leaving cover. Can't you do any better than that? Step behind the yellow line to reset the simulation. Excellent. Proceed to the next course. flashlight to find your way to the door. Your flashlight is an effective tool, but it can also give away your position. Try not to let enemies see the beam. So, do you think the CT-180 will get a decent field rating? I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. Have you seen the commission form for that thing? They want everything that the TR-60 and TR-61 can do, all in one device. But, hand me that atomic retroscopic analyzer thingy, will you? But they don't understand that Clancy's team was killing themselves just to get the TR-60 up to spec. And that was back when they had twice as many designers with four times the development time. Not only that, but the TR-60 was designed as an infiltration device, and the CT-180 is meant for emergency extractions. So have you heard what Carrington's team is working on? Yeah, an ultra-quiet vacuum cleaner. If that thing's really supposed to be some big secret, why the hell do they keep talking about it in the Unity newsletter?
Shepard Arms P-38 9mm pistol is a rugged little automatic that was favored by Allied commanders during World War II. It features a 10-round magazine and can be fitted with a silencer. certain walls, objects. Of course, doing so may affect the accuracy, range, and velocity of the shot, but it's sometimes preferable to dispatch an enemy before he sees you. Keep an eye out for these materials.
talk about your barrette. In its default mode, it can be used as a lockpick, ideal for bypassing certain key padlocks. Of course, the more complicated the mechanism, the longer it will take to pick. Note that the barrette only works on padlocks with keyholes. be used as a weapon by hitting the next function key. When you slash an adversary, the pressure on the blade releases a small amount of toxin into his bloodstream. Quite deadly. when you need to distract someone, practice tossing this coin to divert the guard's attention. Try not to throw it off any high ledges. Hello. Nobody there after all, and must be the old bean working against me. A judicious agent doesn't leave corpses lying about as they tend to arouse suspicion. Judging by your slight frame, you won't have much luck hauling bodies away, so we've come up with this special body-removing powder just for you. Sprinkle a bit of it on dead tissue, and voila! The cadaver will vaporize almost instantly. Ready to go, eh? Well, have a safe mission and come back in one piece. Intelligence has discovered that the American ambassador to West Germany, Morris Monroe, is marked for execution by an organization calling itself H-A-R-M, or HARM. The assassination attempt is expected to come on the last day of Monroe's upcoming holiday in Morocco as he is leaving his hotel. There will likely be multiple assailants. It is imperative that Monroe survive the attack. Be warned, though, that the ambassador is extremely nearsighted and almost deaf, so you won't be able to rely on him to realize that he is in danger. You will be positioned in a residential building across the street from the hotel. Your job is to pick off the assassins before they liquidate Monroe.
So, are you enjoying yourself yet? Immensely. Sure you're not bored? I've waited nearly four years for this chance. I think I can endure another half hour. Good girl. You're growing up. What do you make of all that talk of a traitor? It wouldn't be the first time we've had leaky plumbing. Still, it's disquieting, to say the least. It's happened before? Once. A few years ago, we lost several undercover operatives in Istanbul. It turned out they'd been compromised by the chief's very own administrative assistant. He'd sold us out for a measly 50 quid. 50 quid? Astonishing, isn't it? Trading men's lives for such a pittance. But spies are rarely well compensated for their treason. I wouldn't be surprised if this new mole is equally underpaid. Well, I hope when they catch the bastard, they put a bullet right between his eyes. And maybe a boot up his arse for good measure. You sound ready to volunteer. I'm dangerous when I'm upset. That's why you're always in trouble. All right. Munro's headed for the cafe. Watch for him on the second floor patio, coming from the left. What about the targets? Not sure yet. Pardon me. Uh, do you have the time? No, sir, I do not have a dime, and I don't have much use for beggars. Not a dime. The time. Don't get snippy with me, or I'll have you arrested. Are you deaf? How dare you threaten me? Oh, never mind. Coward! Would you like me to call out the targets for you? That would be lovely. To your left, on the far balcony. I want to go home. But we've only been here for two days. On your left, here. coming out the door on the Why nearest not? balcony. So foreign. On the route well, to your it left. Is a foreign country. I know that, but Canada is a foreign country too. And isn't this foreign? But I thought the reason you wanted to come here was that it is so different. Yeah. Why don't you try to relax and enjoy yourself? I'll bet you have a lot of fun if you just stop worrying. You think so? Sure. Maybe you're right. Of course That's I'm perfect. right. Where's Let's walk time? down to the Medina and see some sights. On your left. Okay. Coming out the door on the nearest balcony. <laughs> Straight ahead, to the left of the tower. To your left, on the far balcony. Straight ahead, to the left of the tower. To your left, on the far balcony. To your left, on the far balcony. To your left, on the far balcony. On your left, street level. Hooligans! On your left, street level. On your right, street level. There must be a hole in my pocket. Coming out the front door of the hotel. On your right, street level. Derelict! On your left, street level. Yeah. 
from down the street on your left. From down the street on your left. On your left, street level. I'll cover him for the next stretch. Get to apartment 12 and wait for my signal. Oh, and make sure to conceal your weapon or you'll cause a commotion. I heard he plans to marry the American girl. You mean the girl who refuses to wear shoes? Yes, her. I wonder if all American girls despise shoes. It seems very strange, but America is a strange country. She may be crazy, but she is attractive. Ah, but you're invariably attracted to crazy women. All women are crazy. <laughs> Shh, not so loud. I'm in position. Good. He's almost there. Here he comes. Get ready. Heading toward you. Watch for him to pass in front of the right window. I'm in position. Good. He's almost there. Here he comes. Get ready. On your left. Coming around the building. yourself a customer this guy is too much second story window on your left not again where are you you pesky Heading little you. dime watch for him to pass in front of the right window on your left. 
Quickly Coming before the, the thieves swoop in like vultures. On your right. Coming around the building. Second story window. On your left. On your right. Coming around the building. On your right. Coming around the building. Tell me that. I was standing right here. A little humility might suit you. I'm teasing. We make a pretty good team. Damn. They must have spotted you. There's a group of thugs heading your way. How many? Looks like six of them. Can you handle it? Of course I can. I'll meet you at the hotel in an hour. All right. Take care of yourself. First, I'm going to take care of some evildoers. Keep your men out of sight. We don't want to spoil our trap, do we? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I mean, yes to the first part and no to the second part, sir. Shut up. Just do as I say, you idiot. You look like you need a monkey. Excuse me. I have a very fine...
If I chafe, I will take it out on you. I must be seeing things. Hello? Oh, nothing. Hello? Someone there? Who is there? The machine took my change. Mon Dieu, what pigs these people are! Here. 
Mr. Volkov said the girl will be here soon. How will we recognize her? You didn't see the photograph on the bulletin board? What photograph? Mon Dieu! I'm sorry, nobody told me. Mr. Volkov was very specific at the meeting this morning. He said, be sure to study the photograph on the bulletin board. If you fail to recognize her, I'll assume something is wrong with your eyes and remove them for you. I missed the meeting. I had to drop my daughter at school. I don't want him to scoop out my eyes. I have no sympathy for you. You knew this was an important mission. You should have made other arrangements for your daughter. Can you describe the girl for me? What color is her hair? Why should I tell you? It would serve you right to have your eyes gouged out with a rusty spoon. You need to learn to prioritize. Please, I beg you. Is she young or old? How does she dress? She is 50 years old and wears a suit of armor. I don't believe you. She just turned 14 and she runs around in a bath towel. Curse you! May all your sons marry camels! If you must curse someone, curse yourself. There are a lot of people who would kill to have this job. You should take your work more seriously. Please, just tell me what color her eyes are. Blue? I'd kill every woman with blue eyes that I see. Brown? Green? I have to get back to my post. See you later. If you have eyes... Ah! Maybe I'm here. Cannot get away! Would you care for a frosty beverage? No thanks, perhaps later.
Be apprehensive about this I wanted to go to France, but Clark insisted on coming to Morocco. This vacation is exactly what I needed. I want to get out and see the Medina, but it's so hot outside. Someone there? I must be seeing things. Who is there? Maybe I'm hearing things. Any sign of her yet? Nope. Damn, I gotta pee. Well, go then. What if she shows up while I'm in the restroom? Good point. Can you hold it? I guess so. We're too late for the seminar. They've already locked the doors. I'd rather sit by the pool anyway. I'm going up to my room to change. in the hall act like they've never seen a woman before.
Who is here? Late, as usual. I was beginning to worry. You always worry. Can you blame me? You're like an errant child. And you're like a fussy aunt. You could at least leave my gender intact. A fussy uncle, then. Thank you. I'm having fun. I can see that. But don't get reckless. We're not out of danger yet. I know. This place is crawling with thugs. Damn! How did they find us? We've been betrayed. It's the only explanation. Are you sure you weren't followed? Yes, positive. If they know about the hotel, they'll probably be waiting for us at the coast. We'll have to risk it. If we aren't aboard the Abigail when she sails, we'll have to get out of Morocco on our own. Or you could stay here. Permanently. Volkov! Get down! Let's go! I have dreamed about this day for six years. Bruno! I only regret I do not have time to make your demise more... eventful. After him! This is all my fault. If you hadn't been worrying about me, he never would have got the drop on you. <sighs> Silly girl. Worrying about you is all I have left. Don't say that. I've always had plenty to die for. You've given me something to live for. Then live. In your memory, perhaps. Bruno! The girl's in the lobby. Kill her! But why didn't you kill her, Mr. Volkov? I meant to, but my hunger for revenge distracted me. Let that be a lesson not to be ruled by your emotions. Excellent advice, sir. Well, I'll go shoot her now. Make sure there are no witnesses. You mean we should kill everybody? First, kill everybody. Then, destroy the hotel. Let our enemies search the rubble for answers. They shall find none.
Apprehension!
You can't hide from me, Volkov. I'll find you wherever you go. Kill her, you incompetent fools! Back here! I wouldn't give you a rotten fig for that disgusting animal. Are you insulting my monkey? I spit upon your monkey. You are a horrible person. I think the monkey's kind of cute. This is the end for you!
be someone there. I thought I heard gunshots. I hope nobody got hurt.
Huh? Who are you? Good afternoon. You're wasting your time. I won't talk. I have been trained to resist all forms of torture. We'll see about that. Do your worst. I'm going to ask you nicely. Where can I find Volkov? Nice try, but I'll tell you nothing. I'll ask again. Where can I find Volkov? And I'll say again, nice try, but I'll tell you nothing. I'll ask you one last time. Where can I find Volkov? What kind of two-dimensional halfwit do you take me for? You think I'll tell you something just because you asked me three times? I have a master's degree in economics from Princeton University. I'm not some idiot, you know. You don't even know where he is, do you? Yes, I do. What was I thinking? Why would Dmitry Volkov tell a lackey like you where he was going? Dmitry and I are very close. Very close. Mm-hmm. And I don't appreciate being called a lackey. I work very hard. It's not easy being a criminal, you know. There's a great deal of pressure. Goodbye. Wait, wait! Don't go! I don't know where Volkov is, but I do have something you may be interested in. It should only take about 15 minutes to get to the airport. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Excuse me? Not on your life, you scoundrel! I'm an American citizen! We have morals in America! I don't understand what you're talking about. This is unbearable! Pull over this instant! I'd rather walk to the airport than listen to this filth! I thought this was supposed to be a civilized country! sign of her. Are you sure she's coming? She'll be here. If she gets away, I will kill any man she leaves alive. Am I understood? Explicitly. Mm.
of you come out. What is this? Stay where you are, do not move! Someone there? I must be seeing things. Hey! Uh, uh, what? Nothing. Just making sure you were awake.
Someone there? Maybe I'm hearing things. There's a ship out there. Should we tell Mr. Volkov? Ah, uh, it's probably just a freighter heading for Tangier. Should we report it? Just in case? Why bother? It's up to you. Someone there. Let's watch and see what it does. If it looks suspicious, we'll report it. Otherwise, oh, I am hearing things. I should probably stop ingesting hallucinogens. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be watching the front gate?
Archer. Needless to say, the Morocco assignment was an unmitigated disaster. Report to the war room for debriefing, and try to control your temper. Well, I think we can classify Morocco as a complete disaster. I knew we were asking for trouble, sending a woman and a fossil like Lowry on an assignment like this. Let's not rush to judgment, shall we? Rush to judgment? I think the facts speak plainly enough. Ambassador Monroe is dead, and we lost another operative, albeit one who should have been put out to pasture long ago. And all we have to show for it are a belligerent, over-educated captive who knows nothing of use and Ms. Archer here, who has demonstrated an alarming lack of competence in the field. I'd like to remind you that Volkov was lying in wait. Someone betrayed us. Indeed. And it seems that someone may have been your charming mentor. Bruno? What are you talking about? The evidence is largely circumstantial, but it is nonetheless compelling. That's crazy. In light of information unearthed during our investigation in Morocco, we now believe that Agent Lowry, Bruno, was in league with these harm chaps. But Volkov shot him. Perhaps to silence him. Or perhaps Lowry was demanding too much in exchange for his treachery. Alleged treachery. Lowry was a personal friend and one of our best agents. Unless he's proven guilty, he deserves to be honored, not slandered. In any case, it seems reasonable to assume that you weren't meant to escape, Miss Archer. Bruno was not a traitor. Can you be sure? Every man has his price, every woman too, I expect. When a man reaches the end of his career, it's only natural that he begins to worry about the future. I suppose some men of adaptable moral constitution even find it in themselves to resort to treason. What's your price, Mr. Smith? What are you insinuating? Merely that if Bruno were capable of treason, then so are we all. Enough! It is neither our prerogative nor our intent to judge Agent Lowry at this juncture. We will continue our investigation until we discover the truth. In the meantime, Archer, we must call upon you for another assignment. Although we call upon you reluctantly, I assure you. We've been contacted by an East German biophysicist named Dr. Otto Schenker, who wishes to defect to the West with our assistance. We know that Dr. Schenker is working on a secret Soviet weapons program although the precise nature of his research remains a mystery to us. He has promised detailed information on the program in exchange for his freedom. It hardly seems necessary to underscore the great importance of this mission. We've had a devil of a time recruiting reliable spies in Berlin, 
It seems the Stasi have ears to every keyhole in East Germany. Which is why we're taking extra precautions. What sort of extra precautions? It's what we call a domino effect exchange. You'll meet with a series of contacts, each of whom will provide a piece of the puzzle, so to speak. Because the contacts don't know about each other or your mission, the vague information they possess will be meaningless to them, and, by extension, to the Stasi, should they get their hands on it. Perfect. We've also arranged a diversion to help cover your escape. Our man on the inside, Werner von Haupt, will place explosive charges at several locations in the record storage area. You'll need to locate these charges and set the timers. We also require that you infiltrate the main library and photograph certain sensitive documents pertaining to Dr. Schenker's research, in case he's not as forthcoming as he's promised to be. Von Haupt will present you with a disguise that should get you inside the test facility where Dr. Schenker will be working. Locate the doctor and get him out. Keep in mind that if this mission should succeed, we will have struck a mighty blow to the Soviets. We're counting on you, Archer. I won't let you down. Well, you can hardly botch this job as badly as Morocco. You might want to stop by the training facility and test out the new gadgets the toy makers have prepared for you.
tempting as it may be, don't destroy them if you can help it. Whoever is monitoring the security system is likely to send someone to investigate or even sound an alarm if any of the cameras goes out. Instead, try to avoid them altogether. If the light on a camera starts flashing, it means you've been detected and the camera is attempting to focus on you. Duck out of sight before you're identified as a threat. If you're close enough to the camera, you'll actually hear it focusing. Listen for it to resume scanning before stepping back into view. Finally, make sure not to leave any bodies lying in view of a camera. That's just as bad as being spotted. All right, now open the door to the next area. Searchlights are also best avoided. Shooting them out will likely cause every bit as much commotion as being caught in the beam. Figure out their movement patterns before attempting to bypass them. All right, now open the door to the next area. Excellent. We've been contacted by Dr. Otto Schenker, an East German biophysicist who we believe is working on a top-secret biological weapons program for the Soviet Union. Dr. Schenker has expressed a desire to defect. He has asked us to assist him in exchange for information on his research. This opportunity couldn't have arisen at a worse time. After that embarrassment in Morocco, you're hardly our first choice to handle this affair, but all our other surviving operatives are tied up on equally critical assignments. If we want a chance at Schenker, it has to be now, and it has to be you, on your own. Guten Abend, Fräulein. Do you make love to strangers? Certainly not. Then allow me to introduce myself. Why not just introduce yourself to a police officer and spare me the trouble? Who makes up these ghastly code phrases, anyway? Someone in the cryptography department. Someone in need of a girlfriend, apparently. What do you have for me? Just this. The entrance is hidden. Thank you. Good luck. Hello. Are you free tonight? Or will it cost me? More than you can afford. Why must I be made to say such idiotic things? Never mind that. Just tell me what you have. I was told to say, in the basement. Thank you. Tell the person who wrote the code phrase to grow up! I don't want to talk to you! me alone.
Nobody's home. Want to come in for a game of Twister? I'd rather run over you with my car. These code phrases have a somewhat confessional tone to them, don't you think? Yeah, now that you mention it. Nobody's home. Go away. Hmm, it says of the library. Like a drink? You are the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. Can you cook and clean too? No, but I can put you in the hospital if you want. Maybe you can find someone to take care of you there. Maybe. What sort of imbecile says things like this? I'm afraid to find out. By the way, I am supposed to tell you this. Behind the shelf. Thanks. Please don't think that I enjoyed saying those things to you. Even though the words were not mine, I am so disgusted with myself that I must return home and wash myself with soap. Don't worry about it. You are a kind young woman. I wish you luck. The entrance is hidden in the basement of the library behind the shelf. Hmm. What are you doing here? I found this money on the ground outside. I thought it might be yours. Oscar Seichnet. Go quickly. Do not get caught. Did she really say that to you? Yeah, can you believe it? What did you do? What do you think I did? I know what I would have done. Then you have your answer. So, how was she? What do you mean? You know what I mean. No, I don't. I thought you said you... You know... What? I didn't say that. What did you say? Why do you even have to ask? I didn't think I had to ask, but I guess I was wrong. You should get your mind out of the gutter. Get some Teufel.
Kill her! Did you hear what happened to the- Alarm! Alarm! That's rude!
Come out! Something over there. Thank you. 
you still have work to do.
still have work to do.
still have work to do. Care for a light? Duncan, I seem to have lost my phone number. Can I have yours? I'm in the book. Just look under police department. You're late. Sorry, I did my best. No matter. Here. Take this visitor ID card. It identifies you as the Commandant's niece, Hana. It will get you past the front desk, then you're on your own. The staff should ignore you, but watch out for guards and security cameras. They won't be fooled by your disguise. Thank you. Go now. If you're caught, I won't be able to help. I understand. I almost forgot. I thought you might like this. This isn't going to be easy. Fortunately. Want anything to drink? Sure. What do you want? Very funny. I have to amuse myself somehow. One free CP soda coming up. May I help you? I need support here! Don't try to get away. You cannot hide anywhere! If I do... Come on out now. You cannot hide from... 
You must be Dr. Schenke. Who are you? We'll have time for introductions later. Our first priority is to get out of here. They sent a woman to liberate me? Mein Gott in Himmel. You can lodge a formal complaint the minute we set foot on Western soil. In the meantime, can we go? This was not part of the arrangement. She is here! Excuse me for a moment, Doctor. As I was saying, perhaps we should go. It seems I have no choice. Ein moment, bitte, my wife.
During the flight to London, attempt to learn as much as possible from Dr. Schenker about his research. Schenker is a notoriously cautious man, so direct questions are not advised. He is also reported to have little tolerance for skeptics. Try to keep an open mind. your wife? Will she be joining you in England? There's Todd. For Sayara. Pardon me, I must get used to speaking English. My wife died two years ago. My condolences, Doctor. I wasn't aware. There's no mention of her demise in our files. It was not made public. There was an accident at the laboratory during an experiment. She was killed. You are familiar with my line of research? No, but it must be fascinating. Quite so. I am... I was the head of the Biological Explosives Research Team. Biological Explosives? Sounds rather outlandish, frankly. Perhaps, but also very real and very dangerous. Imagine an undetectable chemical reagent which can be injected into a living host. The reagent causes a reaction in the organism that culminates in a massive explosion that feeds on organic material. In other words, the effective range of the weapon is dictated by the amount of catalyst in the reagent and the population density at ground zero. In a city, the death toll could be tens of thousands. The speed of the reaction can be controlled with great accuracy by the chemical composition of the reagent. Human time bombs. Quite so. How is such a thing possible? Ah, uh, I spent many years trying to answer that very question. Perhaps you'd care to read an article I've been preparing on the subject. It's rather fundamental, but it will give you a foundation for understanding the larger issues. I'm deeply honored. Don't mention it. I feel it is my duty to reward open-mindedness and imagination whenever the opportunity arises. You would make a fine pupil. By the way, I never thanked you. I'm sorry I doubted your competence. Apology accepted. Uh, we are in position. You know what to do, Sonny. Yes, sir. Initiating docking procedure and jamming our communications. Get up, laddies! We're going aboard! What's this loss? I'm not sure. Stay here while I investigate. Keep this door locked. Come out of hiding, all right? Look, really, we're going to catch you. It's only a matter of moments now.
So much for a lovely, relaxing flight. Sleep tight, lassie. You're not going to kill her? What if she wakes up? Now look here, you. I'm not going to butcher a fellow countryman without a specific grudge. If she wakes up, she can fend for herself. If she dies, then she ain't really a Scot, so I won't feel bad. Now, go get that doctor fella and do a final sweep. Take anything that looks important. Papers, files, whiskey, whatever. Yes, sir! Something's not right. Alright, let's go. But some of our men are still aboard. Listen to you crying like a wee girl. They'll have to make do, won't they? Next 
sure she doesn't land on her feet. Congratulations! You have failed again. Although the circumstances were certainly extraordinary in this case, don't expect much sympathy from command. Unity cannot afford failures, however justifiable. I'm impressed, Agent Archer. I expected that promoting you to field operations would be disastrous, but I never imagined a catastrophe of these proportions. You've now managed to botch two high-profile, high-stakes missions. Care to explain? I did my best under the circumstances. Well... Now that we've seen you at your best, I'm not sure we can afford to see you on an off day. Now, now, Mr. Smith, we've had a few setbacks. A, a few setbacks? Agent Archer, I must confess that I'm troubled by the results we've seen from you thus far. But I also realize that you've been thrust into some formidable situations. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me yet. It's quite probable that things will get worse before they get better. I don't see how that's possible. Did you get a look at your assailant? Aye, that I did. Did you recognize him? Sergeant Magnus Armstrong, born in Glasgow, Scotland, 1925. Frequently in trouble as a lad due to a penchant for fighting. By all accounts, he was a good-natured, likable young man. Never bullied anybody, only picked fights with boys that were game for a brawl. Got kicked out of several schools before his parents finally stuck him in a military academy. During the war, he served as a sapper in France and Germany. Everything from mine removal to demolitions and sabotage. 
earned himself quite a reputation for his reckless antics. The most popular legend had to do with a bridge he allegedly crippled with nothing but a shovel and a hand grenade. A German supply train did the rest. When it reached the weakened section of the bridge, the whole structure came crashing down. It's a shame this chap ended up on the wrong side of the law. To the best of our knowledge, he's never been involved in anything this big before. Most of his arrests since returning from the war have been related to public brawling. Any theories on why he didn't simply shoot you when he had the chance? I'll be sure to ask him when I bring him in. That's assuming you get the opportunity. She just might. We may have a lead. This morning, West German custom officials in Hamburg discovered several suspicious-looking chemical containers aboard a Finnish cargo freighter. Fortunately, these chaps decided to inform us rather than seizing the contraband outright, which gives us a chance to conduct a covert investigation. You believe this is the link to Dr. Schenker? It could well be. If so, given the specific chemicals found aboard the freighter, it's a fairly safe bet the kidnappers are not only aware of Dr. Schenker's research, but also determined to capitalize upon it. If our theories are correct, the kidnappers are in Hamburg or will be arriving shortly. A good spy could find them. Fortunately, we're sending a good spy on this mission. You'll be working with him. A new partner? More like a supervisor. An American named Thomas Goodman. Perhaps you've heard of him. Aye, but I thought he was killed in Amsterdam. Really? He's a resourceful chap, though. He did a daring escape on a stolen bicycle with half the Dutch police force in hot pursuit and KGB agents waiting in ambush around every corner. Smashing story. I'm sure he'll recount it if you ask him. At any rate, you're to rendezvous with him in Germany and see what the two of you can dig up. You'll take your orders directly from him during this mission. Thank God. Very good, sir. Thank you. Agent Archer? Yes, sir. What was it like falling out of that plane? I promise to tell you about it sometime. I tell you she's a liability. Perhaps, but I'm not convinced yet. What will it take to convince you? How many more catastrophes must we suffer through? Because keeping her on the active list will lead to further disasters. Of that, I'm certain. Yes, I can see that you are. Our purpose is to preserve freedom, to protect innocent lives, to combat evil wherever it manifests. We can't afford to tolerate anything that stands in the way of that goal. The girl may be spirited, but she's virtually incompetent. I admire your sense of duty, but I question your judgment. I can't say that at my prime I would have performed any better than she under the circumstances. You're assuming her reports are entirely genuine. Personally, I wouldn't be at all surprised to learn that she'd colored the facts. The bloody things read like adventure novels. So now you're indicting her credibility? Does that seem unreasonable? The girl was a thief, for goodness sakes. A little skepticism seems prudent. I'll take it under advisement. Look, it's not too late to pull her off the assignment. I've read the American's file. He's perfectly capable of handling an operation like this on his own. Probably so. But I have the strangest feeling a woman's touch is exactly what we need on this one. I can't argue with you when you're like this. No, you can't. I hope you realize you're letting yourself be ruled by intuition. Reason tends to make a far more reliable counselor. You might ruminate on that adage yourself. Huh. Welcome to Advanced Field Tactics. Here's a perfume that'll really knock them out. Literally. It sprays a cloud of vapor that contains a potent sedative capable of knocking out a horse, let alone an adult human. Just be careful not to wander into the cloud yourself. Or who knows where, or even if, you'll wake up. Why don't you try it out on Leon here? He's been up for 32 hours straight working on a new prototype. The rest might do him some good.
Proceed to Hamburg, West Germany and rendezvous with Thomas Goodman, an operative from Unity's American branch. Goodman may have information concerning Dr. Schenker's whereabouts. The rendezvous will take place at Das Einsame Valkyrie, a popular beatnik nightclub in Hamburg. You will recognize Agent Goodman by his rugged good looks and the unlit cigarette he is holding in his left hand. Offer him a light. He will answer with, sorry, but I don't smoke. Once you have made contact, you will be under Agent Goodman's command. Follow his orders implicitly.